Welcome to Laravel API Development with Vue.js single page application from scratch. The following episode is going to be an excerpt from the full course now available on Udemy. If you're interested in developing robust Laravel APIs with a front end built on Vue and Tailwind CSS, then this is the course for you. We go into great detail talking about things like authentication, testing, Tailwind CSS, Vue.js, Laravel, PHP unit, and so much more. So I hope you'll join me for the full course. Go ahead and click on the link in the description to get sent to the Udemy page where you can purchase the full course. I hope you enjoy this episode. In order to get this TDD workflow working, there's a couple of setup steps that we have to take. So let's take care of that right now. If you scroll down through your project, there's going to be a PHP unit.xml file. PHP unit is just simply the testing suite that we're going to use to develop this API. This file is in charge of setting up our test suites with all of the required settings that we need. Now it ships with some settings already in there, but specifically we need to set up a testing database. Now for testing purposes, I typically use SQLite because it is very quick and for most cases it is very comparable to MySQL, which is typically what you're going to deploy your real production application in. So to set up an in-memory testing database, let's add a new line. I simply duplicated the line and let's go ahead and add a new DB connection all uppercase and the DB connection is going to be for SQLite and then we need a database. So for DB underscore database, we're simply going to do colon memory colon and that's it. That is good enough to set up an in memory database that is going to run very, very quick throughout all of our tests. The other thing that we need to do is let's check out the test directory. Now there is a features directory and a unit directory. We're mostly going to be working around the features directory because typically an API is driven through an actual feature test and not through a unit test. But Laravel does ship with two example tests already in, and this is what it looks like. Now to run this test back inside our project, we can run the following command. Inside the vendor directory, we can look inside the bin directory, and then there's a PHP unit bin right in there. And if you run that command, you should get something like this. So there are two tests, as I mentioned, because Laravel ships with both of them, and they're both currently green. This green state is what we want. Green state means good. It means our code is doing everything that the test is asking it to do. So that's good. Now you're going to run this command over and over and over, and there's no reason for you to retype this over and over. So what I like to do is I like to make a quick alias so that I can simply run this command very, very quickly. And that is the following. You could say alias, and then I use PU for PHP unit, and that is going to be equal to the following command. So whenever we run just PU, it's going to run whatever is inside this string. So I like to start all of my PHP unit commands with a clear command. This just simply clears out the console so that it's very easy to see where my tests start. So let's do a clear and then using the ampersand ampersand, let's run the same command vendor slash bin slash PHP unit. So this will make a temporary alias for PU. Now there is a way of making these actually persist and it does change from machine to machine depending on what operating system you are using. So if I vim into my user directory and then inside of here, so that's Z S H R C file, ignore all of this down here has to do with my theme, but right here, I've got a couple of aliases set up. And you see here, I have that PU, which is simply just a clear command with my vendor bin PHP unit. And I have another version for PF, which clears the screen as well, but it also adds a filter and doing so will actually allow you to filter down to a particular test. So very useful thing to have. So for me, because of this setup, all I need to do is just type in PU enter and notice how it clears my screen. That's a nice thing because every time I run my tests, I get a clear screen and I know exactly what I'm working with. So that is the way that I have this set up and I've found this to be very, very useful. So why don't we get started with our very first test? Let's use PHP artisan to make a new test. And the very first test that we're going to handle is our contacts test. 
Of course, we have this entire concept around contacts. So it makes sense that a featured test is called contacts test. So let's go ahead and run that command and then jump back to PHP Storm. So now we have a new feature test here called contacts test. We can actually get rid of this example test. So let me delete it all together. And let's open up contacts test. Let's go ahead and delete the test that it comes with. And let's start our very first test. Now every test, if you're not familiar, it needs to start with this notation in order for PHP unit to know that this is a test. So let's start with a very basic contact test. Let's just say a contact can be added. So what do we need to do in here? Well, first of all, this is all going to be code that doesn't work. And that's the way that TDD driven development works. You basically write the test to reflect what you want your program to do. And then step by step, you implement the code to make the test be green. So what is the very, very basic thing that we can do? Well, because this is an API, of course, we're going to hit some sort of endpoint. And then I expect there to be a contact. So let's implement that now. So we can say this, let's go ahead and post. Now notice that I'm using post. Remember to store you use the post not get. So we're going to hit slash API slash contacts. And to it, let's pass some data. Let's start very, very basic and just pass in a name. And we'll just say test name. So when I run that, I expect there to be one contact inside my database. So let's say this assert count of one whenever I fetch all of my contacts. Now, none of this exists. So all of this is going to blow up. We know that it's part of doing TDD. So now I can copy this. And then again, I can go back here and I can run PF instead of PU. Remember, that's the one that I have, which basically all it does is clear and vendor bin PHP unit dash dash filter and then my test name. So it's just a shortcut for that. And when we run that, of course, the very first error that we arrive at is that there is no contact class. There is no such thing. Of course, contact is going to be a model. So let's say PHP artisan make model for contact. And I do want a migration for that. So we'll run the dash M flag. But to move on to the next error, of course, we need to import this new contact class. So let's go ahead and import that class. And it's up here at the top. Use app contact. OK, let's run that test again. So now we have a new error. There is no such table as contacts. Of course, yes, we have our database set up, but we are not migrating our database. So let's go back to PHP Storm. And to do that, we use this refresh database trait. So let's say use refresh database. And let's see if we can get another error. And sure enough, we're back to the point where it says that it failed a certain that there's an actual size of zero instead of the expected one. And this makes total sense. However, this test went through an entire endpoint that doesn't exist, which is that slash API slash contact this endpoint right here. And it didn't complain about the fact that that doesn't even exist. Now, this is common with feature tests, and that is because Laravel is handling all of the exceptions for us and bubbling them up into an HTTP response. To disable that feature, we're going to run this without exception handling. And now we should change our error. And sure enough, now we get a different error. And if we scroll up, we say the post method is not supported. Of course, there is no such thing as that endpoint. So let's make that pass. Back to PHP Storm. We're going to use the API routes file which is inside routes slash api.php. Now this route automatically gets the prefix of slash API. And that's just the way that Laravel is set up and ready to go for us. So inside this routes file, we are not going to use the slash API. It's already in there for us. So let's add a new route for post. And that's going to be slash contacts. This is going to hit the contacts controller at store. Now, of course, the store method came from our RESTful verbs. If we are posting, meaning we are storing, then the action that we're going to take is store. So that is what we're going to name that particular method inside the controller. So with that, let's go ahead and run our test again. 
And now let's see what error we got. So it says, well, the context controller does not exist. Okay, let's make one. PHP artisan make controller context controller. And let's run the test again. And now the error that we get is that there is no store method inside that context controller. Of course, let's go back to PHP storm. Let's go to context controller and let's add a new method here for store. And now we finally get back to the same error. And of course, at this stage, it is because we are not actually doing anything inside that store method. So let's do a very naive implementation of this and simply call the contact that is being imported up here at the top, use app contact. And then let's just create, and then let's pass an array of name is equal to request name. We are not doing any validation or anything at all. We're going to work on this one step at a time. Let's go ahead and run our test and let's see what error we get now. Now it's saying, well, contact doesn't allow name to be fillable. This is a property of Laravel and in the way that it protects us. So let's go back into our contact model and let's just turn that off completely. I am actually going to be very good about this. So we can set guarded equal to none. And that essentially disables mass assignment protection altogether. Okay, let's go back to our test, run it again. Let's see what we get now. Now it says, well, the table context, it doesn't have a column for name. Of course, yes, we created a migration, but it's still empty. So let's pull open the create context table migration. And let's add a new column here for that name. So we'll just use a string for that. And we'll simply call it name. Okay, let's run our test again. And we're back to green. So with that, we've completed the basic first test for our RESTful API.